Hey everyone, this is James Labrie, and you're listening to Sonic Perspectives. See you. I know that look hidden in your eyes. I've seen it more than I dare to Hello everyone, and welcome to another interview of Sonic Perspectives. We have a very special guest today. I've seen him live almost 20 times, and he's one of my favorite singers, Mr. James Labrie. James, thank you for joining us. Hey, thank you very much. I love that introduction. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. No, it's great to be here. Yeah. And I love cool. your shirt. I love oh, your shirt. Yeah, awesome. It's from, it's from the Rush uh, beer. <laughs> yeah, have you tried it? I have, man. It's amazing. Yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's great. It's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, cool. great, great to talk to you at such a great time for Dream Theater and for you in particular. You just finished a very successful length, uh, uh, leg of the um, North American tour, won mm -hmm. a Grammy. Uh, mm -hmm. But to, today, let's focus on your new solo album, Beautiful Shade of Grey. Sure. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I believe you and Paul Logan have discussed a collaboration for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, we uh, we met back in uh, 2011. I sang on a, uh, on a song for them called No Holy Man. Yeah. And um, at that point, you know, Paul and I spoke uh, several times and uh I just liked the kind of style that that he incorporated in his writing. And I thought with my ideas and his ideas that we could create a, a very cool album. And then, you know, that kind of morphed into like 11 years later, us finding the time to write an album. And at that point, I, I, I suggested to Paul that I wanted to do more an acoustically based album at least that being the fundamentals of the album that being the basis and um and then we slowly but surely you know be um, put together this this album beautiful shade of gray yeah yeah and i like that uh, you know outside of dream theater you've explored a whole range of styles you know the proggy mm -hmm. elements of mo musler the modern metal of uh, elements of persuasion and impermanent resonance Correct. Uh, this yeah. acoustic style uh you brought it up or was it paul no, I, I brought it up. I said that I wanted to do so. So to me, you know, one of the most uh, influential and, and inspirational uh, moments in my life as a kid was classic rock, like bands mm -hmm. like Led Zeppelin and Queen and Deep Purple. These bands really spoke loudly to me, you know, and obviously yeah. I was into Rush and and, uh, you know, Yes and Genesis and Pink Floyd and all that. But but the bands, because of their singers, you know, Robert Plant, one of the greatest vocalists ever, you know, then you had yeah. Ian Gillen and Deep Purple, you know, uh, these guys. And then you have Freddie Mercury and Queen. Like, uh, do I need to say anything more? No, I don't, you know. <laughs> and so these guys were coming more from the classic rock with a bit of prog in there as well. You know, and um, so to me, when I when I talked to Paul, I said, you know, I've always wanted to do an album, at least let's let's make it so that it, it stems and it's organic from that period of time. That's my homage to that time. So it first started out that it was going to be, you know, six strings, 12 string acoustic guitar and him mm -hmm. strumming away and me singing over top. And then I said, you know what? I, uh, if we keep going down this road, it's going to get campy, like, you know, sitting around a campfire and yeah. you can only do that so long, right? Where you sit around a campfire and play acoustic guitar and sing after about a half an hour, 45 minutes. It's like, OK, what else you got? Right. <laughs> so so I said to him at that point, I said, you know what? I think we're going to have to morph this into a full ensemble. And at that point, that's when we brought in Christian Polkinen with the keyboards and piano who who was amazing. You know, he added so much atmosphere and that orchestral element into yeah. the songs. And then I, I said, well, we need a, a guitar player that's going to do a phenomenal job playing the solos on acoustic guitar. Then we brought in Marcos Foley, my friend, and uh, I love the guy dearly. Uh, and he's been working with me since Elements of Persuasion back in 2004. Yeah. And then Paul suggested to me that we bring in my son as the drummer because he had heard him playing drums and he's in a band called Falset. Yes. And um, and so, you know, Paul really loved Chance's style as a drummer and he knew that he was very musical. So we brought Chance in, you know, and um, so that's when all these songs became a full ensemble and but still retaining the fact that we wanted to make sure that it was it was coming from 
an organic place, that it felt very, very grounded and in the sense of more an acoustic direction. Um, right. So I think we retain that and we maintain that consistently throughout the album. And then it created, you know, from my ideas and Paul's ideas and collaborating together, we wrote all the songs. And then, uh, you know, um, sure enough, we eventually ended up with what became Beautiful Shade of Grey. Yeah. yeah. And the, tell me about working with Chance, man. I mean, I play guitar and when I play with my daughter, it's just amazing. But I can't even imagine doing a full album and, you know, collaborating with their son so intensely. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> it, well, yeah. And, and that's great that you, you know, that you, you've experienced that. But like, yeah. I mean, yeah, man, uh, definitely it was surreal, you know, like, you know, the way I look at it is at one point in my life, I was hanging on to this baby. And then all of a sudden there's a 24 year old adult <laughs> sitting in front of me, recording my vocals, doing the, his drum tracks. And that's my son. So it yeah. was an incredible experience. I mean, I, I, I cherished it. I embraced it wholeheartedly. And he was, he was great because, you know, he, he, um, he in his own right, you know, he's uh, very dedicated to, being not only a drummer, but a musician. And, and uh, he was very much involved with Paul and I on the arrangements of the songs. And, um, you know, and like I said, he recorded all, he was the engineer recording all my vocals at this studio right here in my basement. And, um, you know, uh, it, it was just a great, great experience. And um, we had such a, an amazing time together, you know, yeah. like any, like any creative and artistic environment, you know, we also had our disagreements, but that, that comes with, you know, when you're, when you're writing and you're in a, a creative environment, that that's also part of it. It's just, as long as you maintain the respect, then it's all, it's all good. It all serves a purpose, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. And I yeah. watched Falset uh, opening for you guys for Brewing Theater here in Toronto a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I kept thinking oh, wow. you, you were going to join them on stage to play that Motley Crue <laughs> song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what? Every, so many people thought that, that we were going to do that. Yeah. And I remember uh, actually Chance and Zach, the singer for the band mm. uh, of Falset, they came out to me and they go, well, what do you think uh, <laughs> you coming on and doing the... And, doing the Motley Crue. I said, do you really, you guys, do you really think so? Like you, you really want to do something like that? And they went, no, we just thought we'd ask. Yeah. <laughs> and because I think that they were, they wanted to stay focused on their songs. You know, they really yeah. wanted to, to let people hear who and what they are as a band. And I said, you know, that would be a lot of fun guys, but the way that I prepare for a show, I do a long warm up and so on and so forth. And I said, you know, we could do that, but at the end of it, we all we both thought, nah, let's save that for something else. You know, fair enough. So yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Well, yeah. back to the album. Uh, there are yeah. two lyrical themes reflected on the title and the album cover that you see here in the background. Uh, Correct. The beauty of human beings and the gray areas of the in between, right? And it's funny right. how you start writing without a concept in mind, but the songs kind of fall into these lyrical boxes right somehow yeah that's a good that's a good way to put it yeah, yeah. i like that well that, that's the thing you know is i never come up with a title to a, a to a solo album until i've looked at the lyrics that i've written and you know whether it's me working with matt guillory you know i always look at all the lyrics that i've written and then the lyrics that matt because matt contributed lyrics as well on those albums and then Matt and I would always sit down and go, OK, you know, well, here's the lyrical theme that I see presenting itself throughout. So maybe, you know, like in permanent resonance, you know, mm -hmm. nothing is permanent, even though it might reside with you today. It's not necessarily going to resonate with you later on in life because we keep changing. We keep evolving. We, we yeah. I hope we evolve. I hope <laughs> we grow. You know, or else what's the sense, right? Life is about experiencing, learning and growing. That's that's the way that I look at. It. So when you just said that about beautiful shade of gray, you, you you totally nailed it because it is. It's about the beauty of being a human being. You know, mm -hmm. the fact that we're given this gift, that this this if you really think about the experience from day to day, it's miraculous. You know, all the things that we're inundated with on a daily basis, it's it's really and we take it for granted. It becomes to a lot of people mundane. It becomes something like, oh, yeah, here we go again, <laughs> going yeah. through the motions. And it's up to the individual to say, no, I'm going to embrace what today has to bring to me and make the best of it. 
and hopefully grow from it. So yes, that's the beautiful side of, of human humanism. And then the, the other side being the gray is the fact that we, we do experience sadness, pain, hurt, uh, failure, um, deceit, corruption. And that's also a part of who and what we are as a species. And it's up to us what path, like what you have in the background there, the which is great for me right now, because <laughs> it helps me. So you have those paths you have, are you going to gravitate towards the darker uh, side of being a human? Or are you going to gravitate and really relish and embrace the beauty and 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 realizing your full potential as a human being and and creating a beautiful life not only for yourself yeah. because i always feel that what we put out there other people can also take embrace and spread it on you know it's something that you know what you put out in front of you is contagious you know so if Absolutely. you're putting out bad vibes evil vibes and all that shit well People are going to be affected by that, that bad energy. But if you're putting out something that's beautiful, something that is inspirational and can be influential, then you're creating another beautiful thing for something else and for someone else. For sure. Yeah. 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 And I mean, on the shady side of things, the first single, Devil and Drag, uh, it right. touches on an interesting personality trait, vanity and being self-serving and shallow. Was wow. it written about anyone specifically or? No, no, it was written about my observation of people that I've uh, come into contact with uh, throughout my life. And so, yes, you're right about that. It's about a narcissistic psychopath, you know, uh, or a sociopath. I'm sorry. Right. <clears throat> I'm just getting over a cold, but I'm good. Trust me. At least I got the cold <laughs> when I was off tour. Um, helps, but anyways, yeah. the, uh, so, so, uh, and it's funny because the devil and drag is actually the ball and chain <laughs> and, and I'm getting some people thinking devil and drag is like the, the, the devil is, uh, he's got, a you know, he's a transvestite, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and he's, he, and, and I'm like, God, no, you know, uh, th that's interesting. Yeah. Maybe I can write a lyric about the devil being <laughs> something of that, you know? Uh, yeah. but I, I said, uh, no, that's not it. I said the devil and drag, the metaphor behind, behind that is that, once you create this narcissistic path and this path of being uh, self-serving, selfish, mm. uh, disregard for others, inconsiderate of others, uh, callous and hurtful, uh, that you are creating something that is absolute, as far as I'm concerned, garbage. And so, you know, do you ever see that? Do you ever reflect on that? So I'm saying, does this person realize? Because the person that I wrote about is somebody who started out with morals, with yeah. scruples, you know, somebody that was a good person, was brought up in a great and positive environment, but, but somehow naturally gravitated to seeing that, no, you know what? I want to get everything I can get out of life and who cares what I have to do to get there even if it means sacrificing others along the way. And so that's the whole devil and drag. So now he's pulling around this ball and chain and realizing that, you know what? That wasn't such a great move. Got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm curious about uh, Supernova Girl, which, you know, for me, it's something surprisingly rare in your career, which is you talking about a girl. I mean, we've mm -hmm. had Out of Reach uh, on Dream Theater's Dream right. Distance over time and now Supernova, <clears throat> but it's rare right in your output well the thing is is that you know like i've written lyrics about when it when it is in relationships but it's very mm -hmm. melancholy you know yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know so uh you know it, it might be something that you know even disappear it's about a, a couple that was together and one one of them becomes terminally ill mm -hmm. and so i thought you know on this album I'm, i was like you know why not just celebrate love why not just celebrate that we do get together with somebody that inspires us, somebody that makes us feel connected, somebody that makes us feel whole mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and that we are something that is significant. And that's when we find our, our better half, our other half, you know? And so Supernova yeah. Girl was, you know, I just thought we've all run into this person that we are, we are just so captivated with. And why not just celebrate that, that, that beauty? 
you know, and, and being so enraptured and enamored with this person, whether it's the female with the male, the male with the, with the female or male, male or female, female, like yeah. who cares, you know, to each his own. Right. Mm -hmm. And so with, with supernova girl, that's, that's it. And, you know, and also I wrote about that in, in a way to a certain extent, celebrating love in hit me like a brick. Mm -hmm. And also, and what I missed, what I missed is like, dude, it's been staring you right in the flipping eye, you know, the whole time, what yeah. is wrong with you, <laughs> you know, and, and then finally realizing that, holy shit, she's been standing right in front of me this whole time. And now I get it. Now I got to have it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? And, yeah. and so, you know, I just wanted to lighten up, but at the same time, I think the lyrics kind of speak at a bit of a deeper level, you know? Right. And yeah. even though I want you to take them lightly, you know, right. yeah. yeah. And what I like about the album is that your voice is absolutely in the forefront uh, and the other instruments do not compete for attention. Uh, I mean, that's right. not possible in the Dream Theater album where, you know, the yeah. solos and the drum feels are as relevant as your voice. Yeah, right? sure. Yeah. It's five guys, you know. Yeah. No, you're right. You know, the thing is, is like with, with this album. Uh, the other musicians, let's let's not take anything away from them. And the fact mm -hmm. is, is that they're all amazing musicians. And um, but at this point, yeah, you know, because of the kind of songs that we wrote for Beautiful Shade of Grey, it really does allow me a a a vehicle or a stage where, you know, I can be the focal point and I can because because of the melodies that I wrote and the lyrics that I wrote, it just kind of and the, the style of music and direction of of the musical style throughout the album it kind of lends itself to that so yeah. that the vocals are front center and focal point and um and i think you know it, it it allowed me to be able to show people that i still experiment as a vocalist i still want to discover different parts of who i am as a as a singer and so there's a lot of moments there where you know it's it's about the nuances it's about the inflections in my voice it's about these little subtle things that i'm doing that you might not necessarily hear but you feel it and that to me is the beauty of music is that we don't have to understand everything that's going on as long as you can take something away from it that is profound to you that to me is is the miracle of music you know it brings everyone together and even on the dream theater tour that we were just doing throughout north america every night i said listen we're going to celebrate two things tonight and you were there if you were there in toronto yeah. i said it you know i said we're celebrating the human spirit look at us all here together once again we have transcended a very horrible horrible situation for the entire planet so yeah. we're here once again to show that we are resilient and that we will forge on and i said in the second thing we're going to celebrate is music we're going to celebrate the music we're going to celebrate that it brings each and every one of us together and look at you know there's no borders when it comes to music and it, right now you know when i think about what's going on in this world and you know what i'm talking about over in the ukraine yeah. and and the yeah. atrocities that are going on there you know even music has even that much more a profound statement for each and every one of us because it's something where we can lay down and all become brothers and sisters and realize that this is something that reaches our the very core of humanism it's something that we all relate to immediately instinctually innately we are there you know and so that is why i was saying that every night and the crowd loved it the fans loved it because yeah. it does right away everybody's like yeah we're here for that reason we're here look at this tonight anything nothing else matters except what's going on here in this room tonight and that's why Absolutely. i'm doing it you know yeah. and 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 that to me is is all a part of creating music it, it brings us together it yeah. does Absolutely. And yep. well, you're going to Europe now with Dream Theater and the tour ends in June mm -hmm. with one show in September in Brazil. Can we expect you to do a limited run of shows with this material of your solo album during summer? I mean, Jordan's touring, right? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, no, we, we definitely want to get this out. We're also we're also going to Japan in, in August oh. to do a, oh, okay. a huge festival in uh god is it tokyo i think it is like it's something like a hundred thousand people or something like that so we're actually flying it's crazy we we leave on the i think the 12th of of august we get there on the 
13th. We play on the 14th and we fly home on the 15th. So it's going to be like a whirlwind, crazy. you know, because they're like yeah. 12 hours ahead of us or 13 hours ahead of us. So it's yeah. going to be crazy. So we are doing that. So, you know, we, we have discussed that, that, that we would love to get this out and do some select shows around like North America and throughout Europe and, and stuff. So we are discussing and we're trying to figure out where it makes perfect sense, where everyone's schedules um, and time would, would coordinate. So mm -hmm. we'll see what happens um, because we all feel that, yeah, this would be amazing to play out live. You know, we could do yeah. a more intimate setting, like maybe 500 to a thousand people and, and, you know, just have that acoustic kind of vibe, vibe. Yeah. you know, throughout the night. And, and I think it could be something, a, a really cool experience, not only for us, but the fans. So yeah. we'll see what happens. We're, we are discussing it for sure. Okay. Yeah. And speaking of drink theater, uh, I mean, the show in Brazil will be at the iconic rock and Rio festival. I'm Brazilian and my friends are like, ask him about the set list, you know, because you have, they have an hour to play. It's going to be a different set list than the current yeah. tour. What mm -hmm. are you guys planning if you can review anything? I can't really <laughs> reveal anything. Uh, I mean, yeah, granted, we only have like an hour. And, and I yeah. will tell you this, though. Um, we The first show being rock and real, but I know that we are doing some other shows throughout South America. Oh, okay. So we, you know, uh, I think we're playing in Sao Paulo uh mm -hmm. porto alegro i'm not sure don't quote me on these freaking cities yet jesus okay uh but i do know that we're that we're we're playing um we are going to be playing uh another one or another one or two shows in brazil after mm -hmm. rio and then we're playing in you know buenos aires and then we're playing in i think chile uh in santiago so you know it, it's not going to be a long tour like what we because i think what we're planning on is is coming back in 2023 and doing a full out south american run but at this point like we're like okay so we're down there why don't we at least do a few shows and get to at least a few key areas in south america even though we're still missing because south america is huge it is it's yeah. huge <laughs> so you know uh, we'll come back like i said in 2023 and do a more you know, inclusive and full run throughout South America. As far as the songs that we're going to be playing at Rock and Reel and, and the other shows, I don't know because we haven't really discussed it yet. Okay. That's the honest truth, you know? Right. <laughs> I mean, it's it's far enough away that we can still, like, you know, we're all going to be together in a couple of weeks in Europe. So when mm -hmm. we're on a tour bus and we're on our way or when we're on a plane to another city, we can discuss these issues and and come up with what we think is going to be the best a set list to play in front of that many people and go out there and kick ass. You Got know? it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And by the way, congratulations on the Grammy. Uh, I watched oh. on Petrucci's speech when he received the award. Yeah. He seemed really, yeah. really emotional. And for us fans, you know, it was a big moment oh, as well. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, he said like because he he texted uh, all of us right after he got the award and, and he was like, guys, I, I hope I make, <laughs> made you proud. And I spoke, you know, <laughs> properly for all of us. And, and, and I told him, I said, John, you sounded like a pro. You, you did. You did us. You did us respect. And it was so amazing to watch you accept this. And I said, you were extremely well spoken. And he goes, I was freaking out, man. My adrenaline was <laughs> pumping. And, and I said, well, you didn't sound like, you know, like you were freaking, like you just, you, you looked and sound like a pro. I said, you look really good in that tux. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, anyways, <laughs> yeah. but uh, no, nah, he, you know, he just said, what a moment, because he said, I was just sitting there and I was thinking, ah, you know, the, I, are we going to win this time? I guess the third time's a charm, right? Yeah. And, and, um, and he said, and then I heard our name and I was like, what? Uh, hell? <laughs> and it, so he was freaking he was freaking but you know we all were like uh you know like my whole family was jumping up and down in the house and we're running yeah. around you yeah. you know and everybody was doing that so I, you know we went out and we had a little bit of a celebratory kind of uh an evening so to speak mm -hmm. and um so yeah we we had a good time and and uh yeah it it's kind of it's 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 another feather in our cap you know and, yeah. and another another echelon or, or or point of recognition so it is cool and um yeah you know it's uh it's a great feeling for sure yeah and i have a question about uh, the impact you have on the fans i mean i've been to a few meet and greets with you guys and i've seen people do crazy things like i once saw a pregnant woman asking the whole band to sign her belly oh uh, God. that was in, oh, in spain yeah holy shit i, I even mean, i forget all about that. there you go <laughs> okay man wow yeah. 
Wow. How okay. I vaguely recall. I vaguely <laughs> recall that. I, <laughs> hey, listen, I, I remember uh, way back in, in the images and words to her <laughs> uh, when we were all extremely young guys. And, and, yeah. and I remember women, you know, being a little more prevalent at those shows and <laughs> coming up and asking us to sign other parts of their bodies. And we yeah. would be like, <laughs> not going to happen. Yeah. No fucking way. Because, you know, well, first of all, you know, however it rings in, in anyone's ear. I mean, you know, uh, I think, well, I know I was married at the time and mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if the other guys were on the images, but they were practically engaged. Let's just right. put it that way. So it was crazy because, you know, like people get really excited. Hey, there was a one, uh, there was one uh, show um, where this guy came up and he had a fucking huge, dream theater majesty symbol uh tattooed on his back and it was oh, wow. fucking, and i was like holy shit dude how long did that take because you know i have a tattoo too as well but i have a couple and and you know this guy's like i said if this one on my you know on my arm took 20 hours to do i did it in two 10-hour segments just because I had to go on tour, I couldn't space it out even further. I, I would have, but I, I didn't have that option. So he was like, oh, yeah, man, like this took like uh, 36 hours to do. And I said, so oh, what wow. did you do? And he goes, oh, I had to do it like, you know, six hours, six hours, six hours. I says, oh, my God. And I, and he, I said, you were obviously sleeping on your stomach. Oh, yeah. Oh, I had to. You know? But it was crazy. It was huge. You know, but uh, some yeah. people are that passionate about the band, you know, that they will. And we've seen several dream theater tattoos uh, uh, over the years, you know, where people yeah. are like just uh, so passionate about what they're doing for the band and, and being a part of the band. And, and that's great. You know what? Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of great, great, beautiful people out there for sure. Yeah. And you're at a point now where every few years there's a, an album release to celebrate or an album anniversary to celebrate. Mm -hmm. Indeed, images and words, scenes oh, from geez. memory. I know. I know. Can we expect something similar for Six Degrees or Octavarian, for example, in the future or not? <laughs> I mean, I mean, Six Degrees is a freaking great album, man. It, yeah, it, it really I is. Know. You know, I mean, I love that album, and and it was uh, there's so many great songs on that album. Holy shit! You know, I, hey, if if we could, I would I would love to pay homage to each and every one of those freaking albums. Like, I yeah. mean, you know, especially something like Six Degrees, because that was a fan favorite for sure. Yeah. Octavarium, you know, another another big fan favorite, um, you know, Train of Thought, even for more our metalhead fans. They love that album. So yeah. I, I don't know, to be quite honest with you, man, I, I don't like it's it's overwhelming because we have so many songs to begin with. And then trying to fit them into, you know, like we're still playing a two hour set every yeah. night. And even at that, we're going, holy shit. You know, what about <laughs> that song? What about that song? What about, and it's yeah. like, it's impossible. Yeah. We'd be doing like six hour shows, <laughs> you know, if we really <laughs> wanted to satisfy, satisfy each and every one of our fans. So yeah. to, to, to answer your question, I don't know. I don't know if we're ever going to get around to celebrating each and every album. I mean, scenes from a memory, that was an iconic album yeah. for dream theater. So that's why we decided to go out and play that. But I mean, as far as these other albums, I don't know if 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 they're going to be treated under the same uh, umbrella of homage. You know, um, I, I don't know, but let's just keep our options open at this point. Fair enough. Yeah. Before I let you go and we wrap it up, uh, as a longtime fan, I can't not tell you how happy I was when Mike Portnoy came to see you guys play on this tour and you mm. acknowledge him in the crowd. Uh, what did that night feel like? Well, uh. <laughs> So what happened was uh, my manager, mm. this is like two hours before the show. Right. So, you know, the history yeah. uh, with Mike and I, you know, of course. the thing is what, what was sad about that whole duration where Mike and I didn't see eye to eye is that when, when dream theater started and images and words and awaken that Mike and I were best friends, mm -hmm. you know, way back. And then we started to fall apart. For several reasons, but, you know, um, it, it doesn't matter. The details don't matter. It's just that we started to have a, a problem with one another. Right. And so about two hours before the New York show, 
my manager texted me and he said, listen, Mike's going to be there tonight. He wants to come back and see you. He wants mm -hmm. to make amends. Uh, I don't mean to do that. And I said, Frank, to my manager, I said, you're putting this in my lap two hours <laughs> before I play in front of how many thousands of people in New yeah. York? Are you kidding me? <laughs> and so I thought about it. You know what? I went for a walk, believe it or not. I, I went in incognito and I yeah. went for a walk in New York and um, walked the streets and I started thinking about it. And I said to myself, you know what? Enough is enough. There's enough hate in this world. There's enough freaking negativity in this world. Uh, if Mike wants to come and see me and make amends, then I should be receptive. And uh, I got in touch and John Bertrucci was also there. Like, so he said, you know, well, you know, Mike, Mike wants to know if he can come back and say hi to you. And blah, 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 like I just <laughs> said, and I said, you know what? Yeah, let him know for sure. Tell him to come back and see me after the show. And we'll chat. And that's what we did. We chatted. We had a good long discussion. Uh, we uh, made up and gave each other a hug and did a picture together. And, and when I was out on stage before all that, I just said, hey, I just want to let you guys know that Mike Portnoy's here. Hey, welcome, brother, to the show. Bah, 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 bah. Uh -huh. And that was it. And so, you know, the thing is, is that you get to a point in life where, you know, you, you got to, you know, you hope that you, you can't carry around that. Don't carry around hate. Don't carry around negativity. We carried it around far too long to be as, as far as I'm concerned, you know, and it didn't serve any purpose. It just served freaking division. It, it was very divisive and very damaging. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's 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 great. You know, hey, listen, just the other day, Mike texts me and he was like, hey, James, just want to congratulate you on the Grammy. You freaking mm -hmm. well deserve this. You know, you and the band. Awesome kudos bravo all this stuff and you know and i text mike back and i said frick man mike that's very admirable of you i said in my book that's pretty damn cool for you to say these things and he said awesome man love it so you yeah. know it's great to be back like we're talking to one another we're you know we're, we're chatting and all that stuff and and that's the, the kind of world that i want to live in as opposed to negativity hate and freaking you know it, it's just not worth it it's not yeah worth it. I mean, I guess I speak on behalf of all the fans that, you know, we're glad that this is resolved and we can move on, yeah. but great. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Cool, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Well, 100%. Well, James, thank you so much for your time and all the best for the new album, Beautiful Shade of Grey, the Dream Theater Tour, and I guess I'll see you on the road sometime. Absolutely, man. Thank you. Great interview. Awesome. Thanks. Great, great hanging Cheers. with you. Take care. Likewise. Bye-bye.